Hey what's up guys this is Atrix here welcome back to a brand new video at the top left corner you will see i am literally getting about 120 fps while emulating the original pokemon let's go pikachu game on my android device using the skyline emulator and this is not a lie guys if i just go outside you will still see that we are getting around 80 to 90 fps which is really mind blowing in terms of nintendo switch emulation on android even my gaming laptop doesn't give me this amount of fps if i am emulating a game like this well today in this video i'll be sharing some tips and tricks regarding how to improve performance how to fix all issues which you face while emulating pokemon let's go pikachu in skyline emulator let's get started the first thing which you can easily do is enable high performance mode from your device settings. Now let me show you that I am actually using an high performance mode which you can see right here. Without high performance mode my device usually gives me around 60 fps but now I am getting almost 99 to 100 fps while emulating this game. So if your device has an high performance mode setting in the settings then I definitely recommend you guys to enable that option as it will improve your gameplay experience by quite a lot. The other steps which I would recommend is the best settings which I will be showing you right now. So let's close the game. And as I told you guys before, if you are on the normal version of Skyline Emulator or the Skyline Edge, you can just hold the game, afterwards go to settings to change game specific settings only. So Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu requires some special settings. Many of you guys still face issues like black screen and other stuff like that. So these settings will definitely help with that. Make sure to enable the enable custom settings option. Afterwards, disable the dock mode. If you enable dock mode, the game will not work probably because you won't be able to choose the controller option at the beginning of the game. So make sure to disable dock mode. Afterwards, there is a brand new option in Skyline Edge which is known as Enable Internet. I'll be covering this option in my next video so be sure to hit that subscribe button, turn on all notifications. Make sure to also enable the show performance statistics to know the FPS which you are getting. Aspect ratio, keep it at device aspect ratio. Support foldable screens, this is also another new option which I won't be covering in today's video. Disable audio output should be enabled if you guys have an low end android device. It will help you quite a lot. For example, Snapdragon 450, let's go Pikachu will 100% work with the help of Skyline Edge. But you'll need to disable audio output, you'll need to use a save file. More on that later on in today's video. GPU driver configuration, now this is the part. If you have a GPU which is Adreno 6 series, for example Snapdragon uh, 680 or above. Then I recommend you guys to use the turnip drivers. Now here I already have Vulcan drivers loaded, not the turnip drivers because my device has Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor. Yep, that's why we are getting so absurd amount of FPS. But on normal devices, you will still get 30 to 60 FPS easily if you are using a turnip driver. Now for those of you guys who have MediaTek processors, uh, for example MediaTek G85, G95 etc. Let's go Pikachu will also work on your devices but with 15 to 20 FPS which is playable. You won't have this GPU driver configuration option. If you want to uh, use custom drivers in Skyline Emulator, you can check out the Skyline Emulator Discord server for that. Anyways, I have enabled force triple buffering. Also, if you want to exceed over 30 FPS, I definitely recommend you guys enable the disable frame throttling option. If you disable this option, you will get only 30 FPS maximum. It won't, uh, it won't go above that. So make sure to disable frame throttling. Skyline emulator is very stable nowadays. So even if you disable frame throttling, your game won't crash that much. Executor slot count scale, you can set it all the way from 4 to 6. Now I like to keep it at 5. Uh, you can set it to 4 if you have less RAM. I recommend you guys keep it at 5 to 6. Executor flush threshold, just keep it at default, doesn't really matter. Use direct memory import, make sure to enable this if you have an Adreno GPU. Afterwards, force maximum GPU clocks. This is also an option which won't be available on few devices. For example, if you have MediaTek devices, these two options will be disabled uh, for you guys. But make sure to enable uh, use direct memory and also force maximum GPU clocks. If you are using an Turnip Adreno driver, along with a good Snapdragon processor. Afterwards, don't disable the shader catch option. Free guest texture memory must be enabled. Fast GPU readback and writes, make sure to enable these as well. Afterwards, let's go back. Now let's uh, talk about the save file. If you use a save file, there will be less chances of the game giving out on you during the cutscenes because a lot of the time what happens is if you are on a low end android device you will get issues during the cutscenes. Now you can see my game is literally running at 120 fps and the loading screen is so fast. 
and once we enter the game we are still getting around 120 to 130 fps which is literally amazing so if you use a save file that will benefit you quite a lot as you don't have to uh, worry about cutscenes because during cutscenes the game usually tends to go slower about 30 fps and it might crash while loading shaders. Now if we actually want to complete the entire storyline of let's go pikachu on skyline emulator then what I recommend you do is not enable the disable frame throttling option just keep that option disabled don't enable the disable frame throttling option or else uh, you have high chances of crashing but most of the time skyline emulator is pretty stable and it shouldn't cause any issue for you guys for example let's enter a battle right here and you can see literally i mean i'm just so shocked to see that we used to get about 80 to 100 fps in nintendo 3ds emulation but we are getting about the same amount of fps on nintendo switch emulation which is pretty crazy to believe and this is possible on all devices now if you have an low end device let's say snapdragon uh, 450 processor then be sure to import a save file like i showed you before here in save management make sure to import save file or just uh, take your save file and paste it into skyline emulators directory that would be very helpful for those of you guys who want to emulate this game on a low end android device but yeah you need android version 10 or above to run skyline emulator that's the one fact which is kinda sad because i have amazing low end android devices which i would really like to test out skyline but unfortunately they are stuck on android version 9 also for those of you guys who might face some texture issues while emulating this game what i recommend you guys to do is just wait for the skyline emulator to get more optimized so you can already see the performance and optimization in skyline right now is really amazing but for low end processors it will take quite a lot of time so i recommend you guys wait for just few more months and you will be definitely able to play your favorite games with no issues whatsoever so hit that like button subscribe turn on all notification because i bring similar videos on my channel hope you guys find this video helpful thanks for watching see you guys tomorrow goodbye